you all for being here. It's a busy meeting. There's a lot to see. And uh, we are very excited about what's going on with Lensar and with Ally. And Ally has really been an amazing improvement in what we can offer with femtosecond laser. So, you know, in 2010 is really about when femtosecond laser came out. And as you can see, there has been an evolution. And we've had the, the opportunity to use Lensar in our practice, which has really facilitated our ability to be very, very accurate with our astigmatism correction. So that's been a wonderful asset. But we're taking it a step further now with Ally. And Ally has taken all of the best parts of Lensar and migrated those into a smaller footprint with the ability to do to do fake emulsification and in a much faster way. So it's better for patients, it's better for surgeons. What we see is that proprietary astigmatism management tool, and I have tried all the different platforms that we have available in the US for iris registration and for accounting for cyclorotation when we're performing our astigmatism management. And really far and away, this technology has allowed me to do that in a way that's simple, intuitive, fast, and comfortable for the patient and accurate for the surgeon. So that to me has been really the best benefit of integrating this technology into my practice. There's also wireless integration with pre-op devices, which allows for accuracy, maintenance of accuracy in our preoperative testing. I don't have to worry about, especially in today's environment, where we're a very staff challenge to have additional staff hours for making sure that we have accuracy and information uh, integration and input. It all happens wirelessly and it all happens automatically. It's very efficient with optimized lens fragment fragmentation that you can actually marry to the density of the lens itself. So I can have a faster, simpler kind of fragmentation for a very um, soft lenses, and then we have. I have a very dense lens. I can easily have a different pattern that most efficiently will uh, allow for softening of that lens. And it does it by the densitometry that is evaluated during the uh, acquisition of the image, so that it's automated. And the more things we have automated that I have to input. Uh, less, the better it is for my flow, the better it is for consistency and effect, the better it is for my patient's experience, and the faster it is, actually. So I don't have to do a very complicated lens fragmentation pattern for a soft lens, and I don't have to worry that I've done too simple a fragmentation for a very dense lens as well. It's all very automated. And then, of course, it's paper procedure. So this also is a, a practice builder as well. So as you can see, it automatically categorizes the cataract density. Not only does it do that in a way that marries it with all these predetermined fragmentation patterns, but I can see that too as we're acquiring the image. So I can look and anticipate how difficult the next case is going to be. So it helps with my mental preparation for the case as well. And then there's so many different ways that you can customize the pattern to your technique. So I like to do vertical chop. So I have a specific way that I like to fragment the nucleus, but maybe somebody else has a different technique that a different pattern of fragmentation works for them. So we have multiple surgeons in my center and I can have each surgeon optimize the fragmentation for each density for their own technique in a way that remains the most efficient for them. And then we have a marrying of that in Ally to phago settings. So something we've never had with femtofragmentation before is taking it to the next step and automating how that will alter your phago settings based on the density of the lens. So if I have a very dense lens, my phago settings can be more aggressive. If I have a very soft lens, I don't need that. I mostly need vacuum. It will already preset that. So it's the first cataract laser that integrates all of these different critical planning and procedure elements so that it's already, you've thought this ahead of time. You've set it ahead of time. You have the machine now as an extension of your planning that you're doing in your brain 
it knows those settings and knows you and your technique. And it's setting up things the way you would want it set up if you had to have that sort of conversation during the femtosecond laser, telling your technician to change settings, or during fake emulsification, also telling your, your scrub tech or your circulator what you want different based on the case. The machine and you are one unit now, that it's in your brain thinking like you do. And since it has that one touch, astigmatism incision planning, um, that also allows you to modify it based on your outcomes. So it can be customized to you and what you're trying to achieve. So again, if you, you know, want to alter your incision placement, or if you're somebody who never does that, or you have different parameters for when you wanted to do TORG versus an LRI or combinations of the two, you can do all of those things. And it allows you to customize it again to your specifications what you know works best in your hands, with your technique, and your patients. Again, an extension of your brain into a machine. So iris registration, as I mentioned before, I think is the smoothest of all the platforms out there. Uh, it really, I almost, I would like to say never have I seen it fail. The only time I've seen it have difficulty is when the pupil is really widely dilated, so widely you can't actually see iris. And then I have had maybe one case I can think of where it really wouldn't acquire the image. But so for most of your cases, that's a seamless part where you don't have to be involved anymore. For me, that was the biggest time detriment to trying to do very accurate astigmatism planning and ex execution with my patients. And now it's something I don't even think about. I know it's gonna be able to account for cycle rotation very accurately in a way that I can use intraoperatively to be effective and check postoperatively to look for rotation with IntelliAxis. So if we look at IntelliAxis and this report, we can see that 88.5% of patients with the refractive capsular axis, which as you all know is the fact that there are these little nubs in the appropriate axis for toric alignment in those, 88% were less than a half a diopter versus 38.7% of manually marked eyes. So, I mean, manually marking eyes for me, again, it was a stressful part. I had to have patients cooperate. It wasn't a pleasant part for their experience in the preoperative area. It's just before they're gonna go into the OR where you want them calm and having a, a wonderful experience. And it took time away from all the other things I wanna concentrate on during surgery. So not necessary anymore. And because it's so accurate, we, the uncorrected distance visual acuity was significantly better in those patients. And not only that, as I mentioned, sometimes you get an unexpected result. And oftentimes it's because the ocular surface is not optimal. And trying to decide if residual astigmatism in the postoperative time frame is because of ocular surface disease versus rotation of the toric when you have a mark that you're able to look at and say it's exactly where I left it, helps to answer that question and helps you to more aggressively treat the ocular surface and be more reassuring to the patient that that's actually the problem that's going on. And you can see it here in the image too, how easy it is to see that there's perfect alignment of the toric lens where you placed it before. So if we look at Acrosoft Toric, and Vista Tour, pretty much all of the platforms we have in the United States, and Symphony, along with Arcuate Incisions, there was a very high level of numbers of patients, percentage of patients who were within a half a diopter of residual astigmatism at the completion of their surgery and in the postoperative period. So, I mean, these are amazing results when you see that, all in the 90s, really incredible. So we can feel very confident in offering this as a benefit to our patients. So the, to me, this is the most exciting thing about Ally, because again, every small amount of time that you spend preoperative marking, even during the femtosecond laser, is potentially time that you can be treating another patient. So having something that is extremely fast, two to four times faster treatment, uh, and flexible, it allows me to decide intraoperatively 
Do I need to do something before I do the femtosecond laser portion of it or not, such as pupillary expansion? This is a huge benefit to me. And so it has adaptive intelligence as well, just to make sure you're optimizing as you go on. You can also continue to refine your outcomes, continue to close that input loop and uh, improve outcomes over time. So here's some of the quotes of people who have had experience with Ally. So it's been exciting to see as we implement it that this, that the technology as we thought it was going to perform is actually performing as we thought. That's not always the case. But so Rob Weinstock, my neighbor just to the north, uh, says that the speed is amazing, the images are amazing. Really everything can be accomplished that we're used to doing fairly efficiently can be done in less than a minute in the femtosecond laser room, if that's how you designate to put it, or in the OR now as part of your integrated system with your phagal emulsification. So now the OR cycle time was 30 minutes. They've been able to cut it down to 21 minutes allowing at least one more case. So one more case is a significant improvement in the profitability, the ability to function in your ASC and continue to offer great care. So, and when you look at outcomes, there's actually already a large body of information showing that IntelliAxis improves outcomes as we saw. All of those results in the 90 percentile within a half adapter for astigmatism correction, that's very meaningful. And doing that in the most efficient way, with the smallest footprint, without the need for additional uh, rooms for to house femtosecond laser, that's really amazing. So I think these uh, comments that we see here are just what we're going to see in every site that is a, that has the opportunity to integrate Ally into their practice. And here you can see the procedure and see in real time just how quick this is. And you can see that this is a very customized pattern that this surgeon has decided is the best way to disassemble and fragment a nucleus for their technique with this density lens in this particular patient in a way that's very automated. So really incredible. So here we have a LRI, the second LRI main incision, and really an amazing result there. Oops, sorry. So again, it's a compact system. It has the footprint of your typical FACO machine now, but just with dual set of technology, having both Femto and FACO easily replacing older technology. It's mobile, can go into any OR. And really, it's suited for any size uh, setting for your cataract surgery. It's disruptive. It's the first in-kind technology. We have nothing else to compare it to at this time. And it easily adapts to whatever it is your technique is, whatever it is your workflow is, however you like to categorize your patients and treat, depending on if you want to use LRIs or Torx or however it is that you want. And even within the surgery itself, whatever flow you decide you want to do with when femto, femto is used in the fake emulsification process. So that's a part of this that we're not used to even thinking about, that we have flexibility in the timing of the use of Femto now within a cataract surgery. And again, very cost effective, reducing procedure time, allowing for more surgeries to be done. And with this mismatch between providers and the need for providers, this is going to be an important factor as well. Well, thank you very much. I'm super excited about Ally, and I know that you will be too.